Trinity is an old pagan religion concept. The Babylonians worshipped the Trinity of Nana, Shamash, and Ishtar. The Egyptians worshipped the Trinity of Amun, Ra, and Ta. Hinduism believes in the Trinity of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. The tribes of Northwestern Europe worshipped the Trinity of three female deities. The Persians believed in the triad of Ahura, Mazda, Mitra, and Anahita. Are you still sure you are worshipping God? Number 4. This is not the cross. This is the Ankh. It's the Egyptian symbol of resurrection at the time of pharaohs in Old Egypt. This mix that we have of pagan religions is a version of Christianity that you're being taught now in school, churches, and on television. In 1945, exactly in the city of Naga Hammadi, Egypt, we discovered several manuscripts like the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Truth, the Gospel of Judas, the Coptic Gospel of the Egyptians, and many others. They are currently housed in the Coptic Museum in Cairo, Egypt. They are proved authentic, carbon dated, and yet, the church refuses to add them to the Bible officially because they have information about the original Christians that contradicts the current pagan belief. In the first gospel, Gospel of Peter, Jesus was not tortured nor crucified. That happened to someone else. In the second gospel, Book of Sitt al-Akbar, Jesus was saved by God. God raised him to heaven and they executed another man. In the next gospel, A'mal Yohanna, no harm has fallen upon Jesus. But they don't want you to know that. If you know that, you will not go to them for confession or holy water anymore. Take care. For the medieval church, the need to keep a grip on their power and influence was rivaled only by the drive to make money. Church officials at all levels were primarily concerned with selling get-out-of-purgatory certificates. They also enjoyed spreading the word about how working for the church would ensure your social position on earth and reserve you a spot in heaven. This fixation of profit went so far, parishioners were often warned that any and all expendable income they came into possession of should be given directly to the church. In the book of The Evolution of the Gospel, a new translation of the first gospel by John Powell, published by Yale University Press in 1994, the author demonstrates how its peculiar characteristics can best be accounted for as being the result of insertions and manipulations.